Hello, uh, I'm Pierre-Marie Doroda, and uh, this is Raphael Amia. We are both software engineers at AIDACOR, and today we will talk about Libedelang. So, yeah, we have lit very little time to, uh, to explain to you, so we'll, let's go. Um, so first of all, what is Libedelang exactly? Well, in just three bullet points, uh, Libedelang is a library and we wanted to allow people to uh, get insight about ADA source code and also to modify it. For this, we want to offer both uh, high and low level APIs. So by low level, we mean some small details like, okay, what is the location of this token? Uh, what is the token under this location? Things like this. And also we want high level APIs such as, okay, what's the type of this expression? Or can you please rename this type and all use uh, occurrences of this type. Um, Libedalang also wanted to be very versatile, so uh, we want it to be usable from any language, technology. Uh, so for this, so Libedalang is an ADA library. It also offers uh, a C API, and on top of the C API, well, it can talk to have basically every everything. So uh, we ship with Libedalang uh, a Python wrapper so that you can use Hold the, the whole um, Libedalang library from Python. So this offers an interesting feature, which is uh, you can basically, you, you have a really short, really short path between having an idea and writing a tool because you can do a quick prototype in Python. And this is great. So yeah, one important point. Um, so Libedalang is an ADA library. Uh, we are going to present you some examples that will be written in Python because it fits in slides. But everything you, you will see in Python can be done in ADA, of course. Let's go. So let's have a, well, first of all, um, let's see why, why we need Libedalang in the first place. So this is a screenshot from GPS, the worldwide known editor for ADA. <laughs> uh, GPS needs to know uh, where the block starts and ends. So uh, here you can see that it knows it seems that it's in a type declaration that starts here and ends here. You get, you get to do some parsing to understand that, so Libedalang will provide that. It also will provide, uh, well, in, uh, in, in um, intelligent code editors, sometimes you want to click on an identifier and you expect the editor to lead you to the definition corresponding to this identifier. So this is often called uh, name resolution or cross-references. We want to offer that. We want to make it easy for IDEs to rename a function, for instance, or do tr uh, source transformations like this. And also, uh, so here you have uh, some program. And uh, we want to make it easy to, f to write for people and for like everyone to uh, write custom tools that will, uh, for instance, act as linters, so uh, detect variables that are poorly cased. Um, this doesn't match, but doesn't matter. So yeah, uh, variables names. If you have a rule like this, vi uh, all variable names should start with uh, and should be capitalized. Well, you can easily write a checker to do that. We want that to make it. Uh, we want that to be easy with Libet. Uh, at this point, you might, if you know enough the uh, Ada ecosystem, you might ask, okay, what not use it using Asis? It does precisely that. Well. <coughs> Um, in Libedalang, we have, because we want to serve as the building block for tooling, including uh, editors, uh, there are some, several mismatches. Uh, the first one is um, we want to, perf to be incremental, which is uh, you open your project, okay, you, you Libedalang analyzes the project, and you perform a very minor modification. You don't want the, the, the GPS for instance, to freeze for seconds or minutes because it computes, recomputes everything that depends on the modification you made. So when something changes, we want to do to perform minimal recomputation. Uh, most of the time when you're writing code, uh, your code is incorrect because you're writing it. And uh, we, so we want Libedalong to be as helpful as, as, as helpful as possible when, you're, when your code is incorrect. Uh, and also, something very important, we want uh, Yulibedalang to be somehow bonded 
in the resources it uses. So we don't want Libedalong to uh, crash your program after three days of a running process because it's exhausted all virtual memory. Um, so uh, ASIS and in particular GNAT's implementation of ASIS, well, they were, they were implemented with some objectives in mind. Here we have a different, we have needs that uh, kind of contradict them. So GNAT and ASIS are not are poorly suited for, uh, for what we need. So, so we decided to do yet uh, another library. Yes. Talk. <laughs> I just want to make one thing clear here. There is no problem actually with the implementation of ACES, uh, sorry, with the specification of ACES for those needs. The problem is more with the implementation that is based on GNAT. So GNAT is a compiler and it was done to do all its work in one pass. So basically uh, it's not adapted to be integrated in IDEs and hence ACES implementation that we provide is not adapted either. But we found other problems with ASIS uh, at the API level, and we wanted to take a shot at uh, doing something that is more user friendly anyway. So this is why uh, we created Libadel. Thank you for those uh, decisions. Okay, so what, as of today, what does uh, using Libadel look like? Well, first, let's start with the basic level of languages, uh, tokens. You can, uh, in Libedalong, ask to uh, pass it a file, to, to ask it to pass a file, and then to ask for the list of tokens that came from this file. So here we have an ADA program, a really simple one. And this is a simple usage of the API, so in Python. Uh, you create a context to, uh, to host your uh, computations. You ask it to load a source file. And then, so you take your analysis unit, and you take the root node of it, and you ask for the list of tokens corresponding to this root node, and you print them, all of them. So this is the result. So, well, asking for the token stream is quite easy. Next <coughs> level, let's go to the syntactic level. Uh, so this is a more complex uh, ADA program. Well, you can ask here to, so you take the root node of your analysis unit, and here you ask, okay, find all nodes that comply to this predicate. So this is a type. So find all nodes that are object declar declarations, uh, print their slug, well, the source location ranges, and their text. And so this is the result. So again, something useful. Uh, so per yeah, performing uh, this kind of query is useful, for instance, for linters. And next level, and this is uh, getting uh, more and more interesting. So this is uh, yet another ADA program where we defined two double functions that are overloads, so they're called the, ne the same. They only differ by their signature, so one of them takes an integer, returns an integer, the second one takes a float and returns a float, and there is a call to one of these double functions. So, in the uh okay, we are, so is it, I didn't repeat it there, there, but we have asked to pass this analysis unit. Then here we call, we're trying to get the double uh, call, so we find all call expressions that uh, whose uh, whose called function is named double. And okay, so we, here we have so this call is present here, and then all we have to do in Libadong to get what f double function is called is to get the name. So the call is actually gets also the uh, arguments, and if you get the name, you only have this, and you ask for the referenced declaration, and you print it and Libedalong selects, as we are calling double with an integer, the first overload is chosen, and so Libedalong finds which is uh, the one that is called. This is cool. Another question? Okay. On the previous slide, yes, sorry. The object uh, previous, previous, yes. Uh, the, the second line is output. Uh, there's only one line with two object declarations in it. Uh, syntactically, no, the, this is in the ADA grammar. Uh, there is this is a single object declaration that declares two objects. That's an interesting point. So, actually, no, uh, no. <laughs> okay, just, just give it to me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, that's an interesting point in the ADA grammar. Uh, syntactically, you have one object declaration uh, uh, node, but uh, indeed uh, uh, semantically, you have two. So since Libaydalong's uh, prime goal is to make uh, analyzers and tools that act on syntax, 
we want to uh, keep as close as possible to the syntactic representation, which is why you only have one node. Uh, we don't modify the tree after par uh, parsing or stuff like that, which is another thing that is difficult with GNAT and ASIS because they are compilers, they want to emit code, so they might get rid of that representation very early on and then you don't have access to it anymore. What if I have a reference to C, for example, and I want to jump to the declaration? So, for the moment, uh, reference declaration will just give you the whole uh, reference declaration. It would be enough, but uh, from C, I have to find the declaration that would be Yes, absolutely. So, uh, what we plan to do is to have an API that will also give you the uh, precise uh, identifier that you are looking for. But that, that is not done yet, but uh, it's not too difficult to do. It's planned. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Um, no, okay. Now, um, so uh, this is uh, being worked as we speak, almost. Uh, so we want also to provide a feature that enables users to actually modify the source code. So here we have um, on the top of the slide uh, an ADA program. And then here, this is the use of the API we intend to, uh, to facilitate with Zilbedalan. So, yeah. <laughs> So first of all, you, um, so imagine we want to, tu to turn this into this. So all we have to do is to take the call put to put line and to modify the, uh, the input argument. So first of all, we find the node corresponding to the call. Then we start a rewriting session because um, while we're rewriting things, we want to keep the old thing uh, available for, uh, for, for to help you doing the refactoring. Um, and then. So what you do here is to take, to take a kind of rewriting handle to the, to the parameter here. And then what you do here is to say, OK, let's rewrite this parameter and rewrite it using a string literal, this one. Then you apply. So that replaces the uh, old, anal the old uh, source code with the new one. And then you're supposed to get this. So we want to provide that and work in progress. <laughs> Pretty far along to me. Uh, <coughs> question about that. Uh, yes. Yeah, uh, you're trying to bootstrap either uh, either other uh, from a uh, very small assembler uh, thing. Uh, I'm part of bootstrap I don't know whether you know it. Sorry, I don't. I don't. I, I'm part of Bootstrap able to work, and uh, we have problems with Ada okay. uh, because Ada is implemented in Ada, uh, and you have a self evaluation problem. And I wanted to ask: uh, Is it possible to use this uh, to do transpiling to C or something, for example? Uh, I oh. that we answer that at the end. Yes, it's a complicated question. Yeah, yeah and a lit little bit of topic, but yeah, let's uh, let's discuss that after. Um, what would happen if the string hello world uh, appeared twice in the program? For example, in, uh, another put line hello world. Uh, so uh, this, actually this, uh, this example is incorrect because find all returns you a list. So here we, we would supposed to be to extract which uh, which uh, found element would be to, uh, we would have to work on. So in this example, if there were multiple uh, calls to put line, we would have several uh, several results, and we would have to pick which one we would we would want to rewrite. Uh, so, if I uh, if I can be a, a bit more precise, the way you are finding the node is not by searching for the text, but uh, you have the option to uh, search for precise context. For example, you can say, "I want the first call," or "I want uh, the call to this function," even if you have another function but the same string literal. So, you have a lot of granularity because you are uh, doing a query on the tree and not on the text itself. So here we say we want the, uh, the first call expression, but you could say something else and get the node that you want to rewrite very precisely. OK, I'm afraid we'll get yeah, out, we of time. out of time. <laughs> OK, so uh, this is an example. So if you remember, I, um, in the previous slides, I uh, talked about a linter that will check your uh, variable names identifier. This is one possible implementation of it. So it's the whole script. Uh, we just iterate through each given file name. We pass it. And then we check for passing errors. And if everything is OK, we just look for all object declarations and all identifiers inside object declarations, because there can be multiple anyway. And we check the identifier. And if uh, it's not capitalized, we want about it. So it's really simple. We want it to be really simple to write this kind of tool. 
And now I will let Raphael talk about uh, more uh, usage example of the library. Yes, sir. Okay, I guess it's good. So, uh, Pierre Marie showed you a bit of how it's supposed to work and how you use it. I'm going to show you what we did with it so far and what we will be able to do with it in the, in the, in the future. So, I didn't get that I, will, uh, I was going to start with a demo. So, a little demo to start with. Um, so, where is it? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to find it, don't worry. So, so far we showed only Python code. So, you might be like, okay, those ADA core guys, they do only Python. So, the example I'm going to show is <coughs> done in ADA, okay? So, we don't do only Python, we also do ADA. So, what it is, is a syntax highlighter slash a code browser. So it's basically a very small subset of the functionalities that you want in uh, an IDE, okay? So you just, it's a command line tool that you launch on your project. Here it's the Gnatkov project and it generates a hierarchy of HTML pages. And then if you click on one of the links, all right, so small. Then you get highlighted code, okay? So basically, this is done with the Libeda Lang API. We highlight tokens in a certain fashion, but we have the tree, so we can do a bit more syntactic highlighting. So for example, you can see that types are highlighted correctly, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have uh, links to the cross-references too, uh, right here. And if you click on it, it will bring you even if it resets the size, which is a bug, but it will bring you to the correct source and to the correct line with the line highlighted. So this is very simple, but uh, it can still be practical if you want to browse your sources offline. And it is shipped with uh, libeidalang today, so you can already try it if you want. Uh, it's in the country di directory of libeidalang. Okay, so Whew, my demo went well. I'm so happy. <laughs> So another thing we did, Python again, uh, is uh, very small syntactic uh, based analyzers. So this was a fun project done by Yannick, who is not here n uh, now but did a presentation on Spark. So he was like, oh, we do all this really complicated static analysis uh, based on Spark and CodePeer, but let's do something really simple. And uh, uh, this checker is do doing something very fun. It's looking for binary operators and uh, looking for cases where the left side and the right side are the same. And in most of the time, it's an error, okay? And this is the way you express it in, uh, with uh, Libet Dalang. Uh, so we look for every binary operator. And if it's in the list of interesting operators, so we have multiplication, uh, addition, uh, the concatenation operator, et cetera, et cetera, then we check if syntactically uh, the left side and the right side have the same tokens. And if they do, we print a warning. So what is really fun is the number of problems we found with that uh, in our code basis. So basically, you would assume since we run static analyzers and we have big test suite and everything, no, this cannot happen. It's ADA, right? It's a very safe language and everything. But well, we had a lot of bugs in, uh, in our codes uh, linked to that. So it's, it's really interesting. So it, it's also an example of the power you, you have at your fingertips where you have access to the syntactic uh, part of the code. So you are not into the text anymore. You can browse the tree and find interesting stuff. Uh, what we are working on right now, based on eBay Along 2, is a static analyzer based on semantics. So uh, it's not a full interprocedural analyzer like, uh, for example, code peers that we have, some of you might know about it, but it's uh, less powerful, uh, less ambitious in scope. It allows to you to do uh, interprocedural stuff a little bit like uh, Selang static analyzer. Uh, so here, for example, we have a simple example we, uh, where uh, we have a file and we open it and uh, I'm going to take that too. And here we get a line and we close it every time in the loop, which is obviously an error. But when you write the code, you might do this kind of error. So what we want to do is to be able to warn you very early when you write this kind of API code and say, oh, be careful, a uh, file might be closed at this point. And when you close it, it might already be closed too. And uh, so 
we are using a simple form of abstract, abstract interpretation to make that. And uh, what's interesting is that uh, users will be able to specify their own uh, checks for their own APIs. So if you have an API that has some simple invariants like that that you want to enforce, you can add a simple checker for it. And uh, it's a work in progress done by one of our interns at Edecor, and you can check the progress on this repository. And we also did a copy-paste detector because we thought it was fun. Given the number of bugs we found with the static analyzers, maybe we could find like maybe uh, a whole project duplicated at Adacor or something like that. It didn't happen, but we found some copy-pastes. Uh, it's also um, an example of the API of Libay Delong. And it's very lightweight. It's a few hundred lines of code, and it's pretty efficient. So if you want to try to run it on your Ada code base, you can uh, find it on our blog here and in the contrib directory of Libadalon. So inside Edecor, we also use uh, Libadalon for serious stuff, not only prototypes. Uh, so we are, gonna, we are in the process of changing the semantic engine of uh, GPS, the main IDE, to use Libadalon. So it's a work in progress. It should happen in uh, the following year. And also the new versions of GNAT metric, GNAT stub, and GNAT PP. So GNAT PP is a pretty printer. It, uh, goes through your code and pretty prints it. GNAT stub generates stub for your subprogram bodies and uh, specs. And GNAT metric gives you some metrics about your code. And all of those tools are based on ASIS for the moment and are being uh, adapted to run uh, on top of Libay Delong. And outside of ADACOR, we already have some people using it. Uh, some guys are doing uh, instrumentation with it for coverage. Uh, some people are doing automated refactoring to make code smaller. Uh, some people are making serializers and deserializers to JSON on top of it. So uh, this is an example of the kind of stuff that you can do uh, on top of Libadalon. So in conclusion, uh, if you want to check out Libadalon, literally or not, you can go on this URL. Uh, you can try it and open issues if you find problems. Uh, the API is still a moving target until we release it at the real product. But uh, it's very stable for some parts. Some others are moving. So uh, it depends on what you do with it, I guess. Uh, thank you for listening. And if you have any more questions. I have one more to add. Whoa. Uh, it's, uh, if you want to know how uh, Libanalong was implemented uh, beside this, we are doing a presentation at what? Uh, uh, 1, 1 p.m. tomorrow? I think it's 2 p.m. It's 2 p.m. Anyway, check out for the language presentation in the source code analysis dev room. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Yes? Does it mean that you will uh, give up the support for ASIS? So um, the question is, does it mean uh, that we will give, uh, give up support for ASIS? So, uh, we are not going to release new versions of ASIS, so it's basically baselined. Uh, we, are, we will continue providing support for the current version of ASIS for undetermined, undetermined time for the moment. Control, oh, yeah, yeah. But don't worry, we, we won't leave Jean-Pierre hanging. <laughs> it's not part of our plans. <laughs> You also might piss off, piss off some customers. Yes, yeah, and we, we don't want to do that. So obviously, as, as long as we have some request for ADA, uh, ACES support, we will support ACES. Uh, we internally, there have even been some discussions like, oh, we could rewrite the current ACES based on Libadalon. So just to, to give you an, uh, an impression of the kind of discussions that happen. We, we, we would prefer not to do that, honestly, but if we have to... Well. Depends on customer pressure. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so uh, you had the question, which was, uh, could we use Libadalong to... Uh, transpile to C. Uh, so anything else? Uh, that, that, that background is this. Uh, mm -mm. Uh, that uh, you know, Ken Thompson's famous paper about backdooring compilers. Yep. Yes, and uh, it could be that all back, all compilers are backdoored, and that's why we uh, started the project a while back, uh, which basically starts with us 
manually switch, uh, uh, toggling switches on the computer and writing a small 200 byte program, which is an assembler. Mm. And then uh, building a tower of languages until we are at GCC, which now works. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, ADA doesn't work because the ADA in GCC is written in ADA, so it, it fails. Okay. Uh, we try to find a way to fix that. The, the thing, there is one really big thing that is missing in the Lang is uh, the implementation of uh, execution semantics. I mean, uh, the knowledge, knowledge is not there for, for now, at least. So there's still a huge work to do from starting from Libelalang in order to create basically an interpreter or a compiler on top of it. Yeah, it's not really his job to translate to another language for now. Yeah, uh, so basically, yeah, you have a small part of the front end. Uh, you have the cross-references. If you really need the legality checks, you can use GNAT on top of Libelalang. But then you still have a lot of stuff to do if you want to comp compile your code. But there, there exists uh, one ADA compiler, not open source, but there exists one that actually emits uh, C and produces a ADA, full ADA runtime in, in standards and CC. Yeah. Uh -huh. uh, but I think the charge for using it is one dollar per line of source code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's the, the, the quote I heard at some point. Uh, that you you might be able to say it's, get them to say it's an interesting project and they're not paid, but, but yeah, we uh, can ask. Yeah. Because I, I think it concerns all of us by now because yeah, we yes. could just have everyone has <coughs> to have untrustworthy computers and have everyone listening to everything else. <laughs> yes, so it's probably not good. And maybe they're interested. Yeah, I'll ask. But yeah, and. Uh, what about the completeness of the front end? Can it pass the other compiler source code? Can it parse? Yeah. Was that the question? Okay, so the question was, can it parse the ADA compiler source code? And the answer is yes, it can parse any source code that we could yeah, find. They found bugs in the ADA compiler. Yeah, so yeah. Yes, it can. Yeah. But yeah, it doesn't fail now. You, you fix the, the parser doesn't fail on... Uh, anything that we could find. Okay. The semantic analyzer uh, name resolution still fails on some stuff, but it's getting really uh, small. And uh, that's all we have for the moment anyway. So.